Uh, we are getting close to the end here, and we this week we are covering a portion of chapter 11 and chapter 14 uh, before going into our last chapter, chapter 15. So let's start here uh, with this video on just chapter 11. Um, because you guys are working on your own APA research projects and papers, uh, we are going to, uh, in reports, we are going to go very quickly through this. I just want to make sure uh, that you have the basic information that you're going to need for the exam that will come up with this. Um, the main purpose of business reports, obviously, to answer questions that maybe um, your CEO or your managers may want answered, solve problems for your department or for your organization, as well as convey uh, information that need, may need to be conveyed. Uh, so one of the main questions that you're going to find that gets asked on the exam, when I say one of the main questions, it's not like there's several, but there's at least one or two questions on uh, the functions of reports. So we have what we call an informational report, and then we have what we call an analytical report. So the main differences between those is informational is going to present your data without any kind of recommendation. It's not going to analyze it, and it's not going to give an analysis, and it's not going to give a recommendation at the end. Um, these are more routine and often very periodic in an organization. Now, an analytical report, though, will. It's going to provide findings. It's going to give an analysis. It's going to give a conclusion. Um, it may also um, go ahead and give a recommendation at the end. Uh, a lot of times it's intended to persuade readers to one type of recommendation or to follow a specific uh, course or recommendation. Uh, also need to realize that in reports, just like with a lot of the writings that we've discussed and forms of writing that we've talked about, um, you could use either direct strategy or indirect strategy. Um, so with direct, their readers are informed, uh, readers are supportive, uh, want results first, whereas indirect strategy, um, we're going to use that for readers that need to be educated. They may not have all the information uh, necessary. If we needed to persuade the reader a specific way, we would want to use indirect strategy. And, and of course, we always go with indirect strategy if we think that our audience, our reader, is going to be hostile or extremely disappointed. Also need to know the difference between what we would call a formal writing style for your report and an informal writing style. Um, they go through in the slides, take your time, go through them, talking about typical uh, formats that could be used uh, for reports. Um, and uh, they also take the time to talk about the fact that you're still going to use three by three writing process for reports where we're still analyzing uh, in that first process, anticipating what our audience, like we were just talking about, do I need to do this indirectly? Um, how is my audience going to respond? How's my reader going to react? Uh, and um, uh, coming up with your uh, plans and what have you, organizing them, beginning to write them, getting that first draft completed, and then moving on to that final phase, which is uh, proofreading and revising and editing. Um, the other thing, uh, they do ask you, I believe, maybe a question on the difference between uh, primary sources and secondary sources. So you're going to want to take some time uh, and kind of look through those. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do a little bit of focus on uh, was when... Um, some terms that they use when evaluating web so, uh, sources. So when we are online and we're doing research and we're trying to find good sources, there's a couple of different things that we want to use in order to identify if it's a good source. The first thing is we want to check for its currency. Now, currency means is it up to date? Is it current? When was the last time this website was updated, if I'm looking at this work? Uh, is anything look old or out of date? Um, uh, look for when the date was actually the uh, uh, published to the web, okay, and when it was put up there. We also want to look for something, so that was currency. We also want to check out the authority. In other words, uh, the person that wrote it, who are they? Are they an authority on this topic? What makes them an authority on this topic? Uh, is their information uh, available? Uh, is it just an anonymous source? Can we look at who did it and look up who wrote it and who uh, put this information out there to check on their authority? Um, who sponsors the page? Are they credible? Uh, we also want to look at the content. Is the purpose of the site to entertain? Is it to inform? Are they just trying to sell? Are they just trying to get ratings? Um, how does the content that you're reading with that specific 
specific website with that particular article, how does it compare to everything else on that? Is it way far out uh, one way where everything else seems to be lining up a different way? Um, who's the intended audience for this particular content? And a lot of times looking at who it was intended for can give you a lot about the credibility of the content and the source. Um, and then uh, finally, accuracy. Um, do the facts seem reliable? Can, you know, uh, what kind of mistakes do you see? I don't know about you, but when I get in and I start reading an article and I'm only a couple paragraphs in and I've already found several uh, grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, not, not really feeling like that source is very credible. There's not a lot of accuracy there. Um, can you see a strong bias? If so, probably not an accuracy, there, uh, a lot of accuracy there. So those are just some um, things that you can uh, uh, look back over and check. They are gonna ask you a couple of questions on the exam about that and uh, determining between those terms that we just went over. Um, also, they're gonna ask you a couple questions about primary research versus Secondary research, here's some examples of primary research interviews, uh, experiments, surveys, specifically like Survey uh, Monkey. Um, Want to go through this information again? I'm not going to linger on this a lot because we're already doing a lot of work separately on our APA projects that help with these things. Uh, but documenting our information is so important. You cannot steal someone else's work. You have to give credit where credit is due. And so there's information there about that. We have to become really good at what we call paraphrasing because you can't just direct quote everything. Uh, there's a time and a place for direct quotation. So a lot of it is about paraphrasing and doing that correctly. Uh, we're using APA for this course, but there's also um, MLA. Um, a lot of businesses, uh, classes and classes that relate to business, a lot of your sciences, uh, a lot of your social sciences are going to use APA. Uh, here's a, a good rundown of when and how to quote, just being careful, like I said earlier, about not using too many direct quotations. So good information in here about copyright as well, and then good effective visual aids, which is going to take you into what your activity was about this week, which was, uh, you know, different types of infographics. When to use a bar chart, when to use a pie chart, when to use a table, how about a flow chart, when is a map accurate, when is maybe just putting up an illustration. So a lot of information there. Um, on infographics. And I believe there's maybe one, maybe two questions on your exam about that. Okay, wanted to do that short, sweet, and hard to beat. So that's chapter 11. As always,